The first member of our quadrilateral family that you're going to learn about is the parallelogram. The parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pair of opposite sides parallel. The properties, so in the table there, so we can check uh, the first row, opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are also congruent, we can check that box. Opposite angles are congruent. Um, the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, and then lastly, the consecutive angles are supplementary. That's true for all parallelograms. So those that we didn't check, those properties are true only for some parallelogram. Okay, so now to the picture. So let's draw in the diagonals A, C, and B, D. Oops, I don't want to do that in white. There's diagonal AC, which splits the parallelogram into two triangles, and then now diagonal BD. And that's labeled that point of intersection E. All right, so let's highlight some of those properties. So both pair of opposite sides are parallel, so let's put the arrows noting that BC is parallel to AD, and that AB is parallel to CD. Switching colors, uh, both pair of opposite sides are congruent. So BC is congruent to AD and AB is congruent to CD. The next one, opposite angles are congruent. So that means angle A is congruent to angle C and angle B is congruent to angle D. The diagonals bisect each other. So that means that um, B to E is congruent to E to D, and A to E is congruent to C to E. And then last, our consecutive angles are supplementary. So what that's going to mean is the measure of angle A, for example, plus the measure of angle B is 180 degrees. And that could be also angles B and C. Those are consecutive, um, C and D, and then A and D. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the properties of the triangles that are formed within that parallelogram. Okay, so triangle ABC. So if we highlight ABC, it's this triangle right here. Which triangle is that congruent to? And that triangle is congruent to CDA. Okay, I know that this angle right here, I'm going to put a 1 um, th for the ABC. Because of the AB being parallel to CD, 1 in this angle right here, so I'll put another 1. Those two angles are congruent because they're alternate interior. Um, these two examples, so 2 and 2, they would be congruent because those are alternate interior. If this was a 3, this is going to be a 3. Um, alternate interior, and this 4 is congruent to that 4, alternate interior. And then we have the vertical angles in the center, okay? The next one, so let's highlight BCD. So BCD, take a moment to determine which triangle that's congruent to. And remember, we want to write the letters in order of congruency. So BCD is congruent to... That would be triangle DAB. Triangle ABE. So ABE, look at where the ones are placed in the three in the triangle, uh, just to the right of that. That would be congruent to triangle CDE. And then lastly, triangle BCE. You can take a look at the four and the two. That would be congruent to triangle DAE. All of the triangles above um, that we just noted are all scalene triangles. So no sides or angles are congruent. All right, now to take a look at some examples. So it says below that in example one that ABCD is a parallelogram. Find the length of AD in the measure of angle B. So let's take a look at the sides that are given. I know that AD is 7x, its length, 
and the length of BC is represented by 5x plus 19. Because both pair of opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, I know that those measures are equal. So 5x plus 19 equals 7x. Solving for x, we get 19 equals 2x. Divide by 2, and x is 9 and a half. Now to find the length of AD, we need to plug it in. So now 7 times 9.5 is 66 and a half. So that equals the length of AD. Angle B. So in the parallelogram, we're given the measure of angles um, B and A. B and A are consecutive angles. So that means their measures add up to 180 degrees. So the equation would be 10y minus 1 plus 6y plus 5 equals 180 degrees. Combining like terms, and I'm actually going to subtract the 4 over to the other side. We get 16y equals 176. Divide by 16, and y is 11. So the measure of angle B is going to be 6 times 11 plus 5, or 71 degrees. All right, number two. We have parallelogram uh, ABCD with the diagonals drawn. If AE, so AE is part of diagonal AC, is 3x plus 2. And EC, which is the other part of that diagonal, is 20. Uh, what is the value of x? Well, I know that the diagonals bisect each other. So diagonal DB just cut AC in half. So AE is congruent to EC. So their lengths, 3x plus 2, are equal. Subtract the 2, we get 3x equals 18. Divide by 3, and x is 6. All right, in number 3, we have parallelogram LMNO with the diagonal LN drawn. So that the measure of angle M is 114 degrees. Well, then I know that O is also 114 degrees because opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. LNO is 30. So LNO is 30 degrees. Explain why the measure of NLO is 36. So NLO is, so they're telling me it's 36 and I need to explain why. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is go back to what I wrote in blue. And I first wrote that the measure of angle O was 114 degrees. So again, to explain, I like to bullet. Uh, so I state a computation or I state a fact and then back it up. So O, the measure of angle O is 114 degrees because opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Okay, and now I can state that um, this angle is 36. And L O is 36 degrees because that was the interangle sum of the triangle L O N. So the interior angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees, so 180 minus the 114 plus 30 is 36. Okay, number four. We have parallelogram Fred. ED is extended to A and AF is drawn such that AF is congruent to DF. So we have an isosceles triangle. If the measure of angle R is 108, what is AFD? So I'm trying to find this angle here, given that this angle is 108 degrees. Well, in parallelogram Fred, I know D is 108 because opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. We have a linear pair right here. So two angles along a straight line and up to 180. So that means this angle here is 72 degrees, which would mean that this angle here is also 72 degrees. 
that gives me a sum of 144. So looking at, lastly, the triangle AFD, which is, um, has an interior angle sum of 180, 180 minus 144 is 36 degrees. So that is equal to the measure of angle AFD. Number five, find the area and perimeter of the parallelogram in simplest radical form. So simplest radical form, that means they want an exact answer, okay? Well, right now I can find the perimeter um, because opposite sides are congruent. So let's do that here. The perimeter would be 2 times 6 plus 2 times 10. So 20 plus 12 is 32 centimeters. Now the area. So area of a parallelogram is base times height. And we have a base of 10. So I need the height of the parallelogram. Remember, the height can be drawn at any point from um, that upper side to the bottom or from these, it's the distance between these two parallel sides, rather, is a better way to say it. So I'm going to draw the altitude right here. And in doing so, creates this 30, 60, 90 right triangle right here. So this is 30 degrees. And we know if the hypotenuse is 6, it's a 2 to 1 ratio between the hypotenuse and shorter leg. So this shorter leg opposite the 30 is going to be 3 centimeters. And using the properties, okay, uh, at this point we can do Pythagorean theorem, but to go over the properties of the triangle, this longer leg is whatever this shorter leg is, radical 3. So this is going to be 3, radical 3. So now plugging it in for the height, 10 times 3, radical 3, we have an area of 30, radical 3 square centimeters. All right, one more question before we do a construction. So we have parallelogram hand to the right with diagonals HN and AD intersecting at S. Which statement is always true? Okay, so I'm going to use some colored pen, uh, different colors to look at each multiple choice answer. So AHS, let's locate that angle. That's this angle. Is that congruent to ANS? No. Um, AHS would be congruent to this angle because of two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And those are alternate interior. So that's not it. So I'm just going to erase the whole slide, make it easier. Uh, we're having some issues. There we go. All right, number two. HDS, so HDS, this angle here, is that congruent to NDS? No. So the diagonal does not bisect the angle. Nope. So one and two are out. Three, HN is half of AD. So HN, well, HN is a diagonal. AD is a diagonal. No. One is not necessarily half of the other. So it must be 4. So let's look at 4. AS, so this segment here, is half of AD. Yeah. Because HN bisects it. The diagonals bisect each other. So that means S, right? S is a midpoint of both AD and HN. So yes, the answer is 4. All right, the construction. We are given parallelogram ABCD with AB parallel to CD and AD parallel to BC. Using a compass and straight edge, construct the altitude from vertex A to CD. So an altitude is drawn perpendicular to the side it's drawn to. So we just need to do a line perpendicular to CD through A. So remember the perpendicular line construction. Okay, is to first draw an arc. And because um, I only have one point of intersection with CD, I need to extend CD. So take your ruler and extend CD to get this point right here. 
And now we're going to draw the X. So you put your compass on one point of intersection between CD and the arc. And we're going to draw the X, or one arc of the X, and then the other arc. And then we're going to close that. So now through this point, now I have to, I'm going to use the line tool to draw a straight line, and I'm going to use the white pen to go back and make it dotted. So, and I'm going to slide that over. So take your ruler, and you want to draw a dotted line because it's outside of the parallelogram. Okay, I'm just going to go back. Oops, not with white though. And add the arrows. And there's the altitude through A, or from vertex A to side CD.